evening. I'm going to call to order the Wednesday, May 21st, regular council meeting. At this time, will you join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And roll call. Councilor Donovan? Here. Councilor Katarina? Here. Councilor St. Clair? Here. Councilor Blaze? Here. Councilor Benedict? Here. Vice Chair Holbrook? Here. So at this time, we'll be doing general public comments. Before I start with the general public, I'm going to ask we have some students from the Scarborough High School here this evening. If you could please file and line up at the podium and just state your name and which uh, class you're here for, what your teacher's is and that way you have an account and proof that you are here like you said you were so um, um I'm Brianna Beiter and I'm from Mr. Coffin's class. Is he done in Mr. Coffin's class? I'm Cole Disney, and I'm from also from Mr. Coffin's class. I'm Brandon Plummer, and I'm also from Mr. Coffin's class. I'm Kelsey Donahue, and I'm from Mr. Roberts' class. And then we have a boy scout. And then we also have another young yeah, person do. here this <laughs> evening that can come right on up and state your name and all that good stuff. All right, um, I'm Chris Dion. I'm not from Mr. Coffin's class. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I'm here because uh, I'm a voice girl and I'm here for a crime and learning about uh, the community. And Dr. Jean Marie. Yeah. Great. Thank you. All right, at this time, we'll open up the floor for general public comments. Please state your name, address, and you have three minutes. My name is Jackie Perry. I reside at 215 Black Point Road. Uh, I am on the school board, but I'm not here as a school board person tonight. I'm here as a Kiwanian. I want to inform you and the public that Kiwanis is holding a food drive for the Scarborough uh, Food Pantry. It will start Tuesday and run for two weeks. There are drop-off points at all schools. If you would like to donate food and you need a pickup, you can call Ron Forest Fence at 883-2775. Other drop-off points are orthopedic uh, physical therapy on the corner of Willowdale and Route 1, Sockle Biddeford Savings, and uh, the Lazy Boy Store. So. Uh, Last count, well over 180 individuals were availing themselves of the Scarborough uh, Food p Pantry. Children especially uh, will be needing food during the summer months, and we will conclude uh, the pickup in two weeks on Saturday with drop-offs both at the Black Point Church and the Blue Point Church. So you'll see signs around, you'll see the banana boxes around, and if you need any more information, you can get in touch with me or with any Kiwanian. Thank you very much. Good evening. I'm Michael Turek. I reside at 11 Bayberry Lane. I have a few points to make in my three minutes. First of all, I printed out, read, and tried to decipher the 20-page school budget dated 1 May and the 150 pages of town budget with analysis. I now understand the Herculean task this council faced trying to do the best job possible allocating limited funds. Secondly, I realize that if every member of the council and the school board read the school budget, not everyone understood it all. I honestly wonder how many, how many people in both groups questioned some of the items. 
For instance, on the first page titled General Fund Kindergarten through Grade 12, there is an item called Charter School Tuition. This item went from $20,000 to $54,500 in one year, yet the dollar change in the percentage columns are empty. I question to whom do we pay the charter school tuition and why is it not shown as a change if it went so high? Career and technical education went from $272,000 and some change to $338,000 uh, $338, and some change. That's a 24.4% increase. And I have to question why. Guidance services went from $776,000 and some change to $1,224,000. It's a 57.6% increase in one year. Here again, why? Page two of 20 says a substitute teacher wages went up 50%. I wonder if we hired 50% more substitute teachers or did we give our present substitute teachers a 50% pay raise? I want you to realize these questions are rhetorical this evening. I expect no answers. Nor do I expect you to be able to speak to every line item in the budget. I do, however, think that these types of questions need to be asked before the budget process gets to the point that it is now. I also think that the budget should go no further than the initial reading if it does not comply with the Council's stated position of a flat budget and a flat mill re increase to just move it through the process, in my estimation, is incorrect. Fourth, I firmly believe that teachers are our most important asset in the school system. I'm not anti-education, but I am anti-limitless increases in spending. As one woman said today, and I quote, I'm all for a good education, but my God, it doesn't have to be gold-plated. End quote. As I stated in the council meeting several weeks ago, I had to come out of retirement after six years because my mill rate kept increasing. I couldn't keep up. It's not a very nice thing to have happen. And I'm sure I'm not the only one. If this council and the school superintendent and the school board drive people out of their homes, None of you will feel any pain. Someone will move in who has the money to pay what you're asking. It's those of us who have to move out that are going to feel the pain. My name is Robert Rovner. I live at 4 uh, King Street. Um, just real quickly, and I'm going to leave these with you, these printouts. Over the last couple of week, um, um, meetings here, um, people have been getting up, especially from the school board, saying that Scarborough has the lowest mill rate, as if to say, well, that's just authorizing an increase. But the fact of the matter is, we're not. Um, there are 25 um, communities in Cumberland County. There are 10 have mill rates lower than us here in uh, Scarborough, and there are 14 above us. Now, I just wanted to correct the record for that, since Mike had brought up the mill rate and others have brought it up in the, in the past. I just thought it's something that should be thrown out there. Let me get the facts out there. I'm just going to leave these with you. <coughs> Anybody else wish to speak? All right. Seeing none, I'm going to close the general public comment. At this time, we'll be taking item five, which will be um, the minutes, which, sorry, let me mm -hmm. pass that. Um, <coughs> excuse me. I do want to mention that there is um, dirt for the minutes for May 7th, 2014. You do have, or you should have a piece of paper in front of you this evening. Um, and so I would like to offer, I would like to make the following corrections to the minutes for the May 7th Town Council meeting as follows. 
on page 28, the second paragraph, the total sum for the education operating budget should read 43900 and $74,495 to reflect the adult education portion of the budget and the sum for the local share for the educating, education operating budget should read $36,336,000. This is why it was a typo. <laughs> Which reflects what was approved by the town council on the May 7th town council meeting. Um, I would add that um, during the vote it was typed correctly um, at referendum. It was just a, a typo in the minutes as it was reflected from that meeting. Um, so do I need a, yeah, I need a motion to um, approve, the amendments. approve the amendments as amended? Right. Okay. And is there a second? Second. All right. Any discussion? All right. Seeing none, all those in favor? All right. So now moving on to adjustments agenda. Yes, there uh, is one item that I would like to add. It, it would be the a third public hearing for um, a food handler's license uh, that had been properly advertised. Uh, it just didn't make it onto the agenda and that will come after 1447 and it's for the first stop convenience store. So when the, the appropriate time I'll read that into the all right. Thank, Thank you. you. Item 7 is Treasurer Warrant, which I will sign a little later. And at this time, we have Order Number 14-46, which is a public hearing and second reading on the proposed amendment to Chapter 313, the Property Tax Assistance Ordinance. Um, so again, at this time, this is the public hearing. Is our, if there's any members from the public that wish to speak, please approach the podium, name, address, and three minutes. Right. I forgot. Got to get my gavel. Um, seeing none, I close the public hearing. Um, pleasure of the council. Move the motion. All right. First, is there a second? second. And discussion. Madam Chair, I have an amendment. Marie. Um, I am proposing that under Section Four, Line One, Two, Three, Four, strike starting with applicants and ending with uh, paid in the preceding calendar year. We replace that with the following wording. Um, and then I'll explain why I'm, I want to do this. Uh, at time of application, applicants must provide evidence of income eligibility in the form of a signed copy of the Form 1040ME, including Schedule PTFC, Property Tax Fairness Credit, as proof and dollar amount of state property tax fairness credit eligibility. The program is based on the pro state property tax fairness credit and relates to property taxes paid in the preceding calendar year. No confidential income records will be maintained by the town. Um, I had uh, a number of constituents uh, um, contact me and they were concerned that <clears throat> we were going to be collecting confidential uh, financial and income tax information and keeping it and holding on to it. Um, and I talked to uh, uh, Town Manager Hall about this and um, he agreed with me that, you know, to, to hold on to these records would be difficult and it's like, do we really need to hold on them? All we need to do is establish that uh, people do qualify for this property tax credit. Uh, and I also had a concern from talking to some folks that they, they, we have a lot of proud people in town and they didn't feel like people should be holding on to these records in, in city hall, excuse me, in town hall. Um, and they may not apply for, for a program that they qualify for because they felt it would be too much of an invasion of privacy. So all we're asking is that people show us, you know, what they have, but we aren't going to keep it. So any, that, that would be, I hope I explained it correctly, Mr. Hall. <laughs> yeah, I think perfectly well. We just need to be um, provided the, the evidence that eligibility is, is attained. Uh, we don't need to maintain or keep that record. In fact, I don't want to. Uh, to the extent that applications are filed by mail, we'll see to it that the documents will be shredded and properly disposed of. Um, um, in, the, in the previous ordinance... Yeah. Um, do you get it? I'll hold you for just a moment. Um, I'm going to second your amendment, so now we're open okay. for discussion. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead, Ed. In the previous ordinance, 
we only have we required the what did we require? Evidence of there were three requirements for eligibility. One was you need to be 62 years old. Right. That's still a requirement. Uh, the other was that you had to have qualified for the state circuit breaker program, okay. which has now gone away entirely. And 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 what did we have? To, what did the individual have to show for that? Uh, I don't recall, but certainly tax returns uh, were not part of that eligibility. And I think the town, all the town did was go back to the state. We relied, we relied on the simple fact that they were eligible for the state. Why wouldn't we do the same thing here? I suppose, uh, I suppose we could, uh, although I, I think there's still some changes in, in the works for uh, the state's program. But I suppose uh, we could simply take the eligibility for, for what it is at face value. Mm -hmm. Talk. Talk. Me. Excuse me. <laughs> um, it says here that it was struck. It says attached to all applications shall be proof and dollar amount, copy of check of state refund under Chapter 907 of Title 36, State Circuit Breaker Program. That was one of the original. Right. Mm. So we required a copy. That was one of the ways to prove eligibility. Uh, I think to Councilor Blaze's point, is that we could, through some wordsmithing, <coughs> rely on the fact that they've been eligible through the state's program and by virtue of that they're eligible for the local program. Yeah, I'm fine with that. <clears throat> Believe me, staff does not relish, uh, you know, looking at people's tax return and, and calculating eligibility based on income and right. taxes paid. So if there's an easier way to do it, I might suggest that uh, if you're willing to pass this this evening just so long as we, so we can have a program in place and we can fine tune that, um, if necessary, I'll bring back an amendment. Sure. Any other discussion on the amendment? All right. Seeing none, those um, favor the amendment. Yeah, in favor of the amendment. And opposed? Seeing none. Now back to the main motion. Um, any further discussion as amended? The main motion as amended? Yeah. All right, seeing none, all those in favor? And opposed? All right. So, order number 14-47 is a 7 p.m. public hearing and action on the renewal requests for a special amusement permit from Black Point Inn, located at 510 Black Point Road, Bailey's Campground, located at 274 Pine Point Road, Higgins Beach Inn, located at the 34 Ocean Ave, Libby Mitchell Post 76, located on 40 Manson Libby Road, Loyal Order of the Moose, located at 19 Sing Spring Street, and Scarborough Downs, located at 90 Payne Road, as well as you had an addition oh, that's for something else. Oh, sorry. No, it's not my fault. Uh, <laughs> So again, this is a, a public hearing, so at this time, um, I will open for a comment from the general public. All right, seeing none, we'll close the public hearing, and pleasure of the council. Move the motion. All right, first, and do we have a second? second? And discussion. All right, and seeing none, all those in favor? And opposed, you're all set. No, I read that. Uh, uh, order number 1451 is a 7 p.m. public hearing in action on the new request for a food handler's license from First Stop Convenience Store, LLC, doing business as First Stop Convenience Store, located at 85 Payne Road. Um, I'm sorry, 85 County Road. Sorry about that. Yes, yes. Right, and at this time, I'll open the floor for any public comment. And seeing none, and pleasure of the council. Move the motion. Second. And discussion? And seeing none, all those in favor? And unanimous. So under, we're now into old business. Order number 14-39 is to act on the request to renew the town manager's contract. So the public, yes, I should. At this time, if there is any um, general public comment, please step forward. <laughs> Seeing none, I'm going to close the public comment and pleasure of the council. So moved. Second. And any discussion? Very happy to see 
this raise and, <laughs> and package be given to our town manager who does an excellent job. Really Thank outstanding you. job. Thank you. All right. And I would second that. <laughs> all right. And um, so all those in favor? Aye. And opposed? Seeing none. Moving on to order number 14-48 is Act to approve the appointment of Sharman Kavitsky to the Historical Preservation Ad Hoc Committee as recommended by the Appointments Committee. And if there's any discussion from the public, seeing none, and pleasure of the council. So moved. Sure. Okay. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Okay, new business. Order number 14-49 is the first reading on the proposed fiscal year 2015 school budget and schedule a public hearing and second reading Wednesday, June 4th, 2014. Um, before we open up for comments, um, I'm going to go ahead and invite the um, Finance Committee Chair, um, Mr. Chiazzo, and he's going to spend a few minutes just speaking uh, as to where they're at at this as a Finance Committee. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, I was hoping the next time we came together uh, it would be to further discuss our commitment as the two Scarborough Governance Boards to continue to improve our communications and working uh, relationship so that our joint efforts could best serve the community. Um, I think it's fair to say that we'd all hoped not to need to further have further discussions in order to adjust the school's budget, but um, here we are. Um, one may be hard pressed to find any compelling direction in the referendum results given the small difference between the yeas and the nays and more disappointingly because of the very low voters that actually showed up at the polls. I'm not certain what it says about a community that flocks, of poll, that, that flocks to the polls on a matter that involves dogs and birds while matters of education, preparing students for future career success and community economic development seem to draw the most minimal level of voter attention. That said, the people who did vote against the budget outnumbered those who voted to support it and the referendum outcome needs to be honored and responded to. I want to thank the Town Council's Finance Committee who has invited the Board to bring forth an adjustment to the school, bu school budget number uh, for your first reading. As School Board Finance Chair, I'm here tonight to do just that. The additional reduction I'm bringing to you this evening has been vetted by the Superintendent and has been reviewed and approved by the School Board Finance Committee. While the Board as a whole has not officially met to vote on this recommendation, Board members have been polled and, given many, and, and have given, many quite reluctantly, their consent to this adjustment. I would like to begin our presentation with the question, so how did we get here? The superintendent was charged, as he is every year, to develop a student needs based budget, one that he and his team of educational leaders believe to be truly responsive to the level of the need, student needs in Scarborough. This year that budget included investments and restorations of educational programs drastically cut or eliminated in previous budgets. That investment and restoration amount of $1,646,250 may seem large, but actually would have only represented 3.7% of the total school budget. More importantly, it represented the total amount of investment needed to move more aggressively on meeting the current programming needs of the students. The student needs budget, while a valid indicator of needed resources, would have resulted in a school spending increase that clearly could not pass. In an effort to better balance student needs with the current economic conditions, the board worked with the school leadership team to dramatically reduce this number by $697,250. This was the value approved by the Board of Education and included in the budget presented to the council as a first reading. Between the first reading and the second reading, and influenced by the board and the council's deliberations, the Board of Education worked with the superintendent and his team to further reduce investments and restorations by another $235,000 and the board approved this reduced level and included it in the budget brought to the council for the second reading and approval. The council, in setting the final municipal budget, further reduced the school board budget by $587,000 in order to achieve a net tax impact of 3.5%. To accommodate this significant reduction, the board chose to preserve the investments and restorations and was forced to dig deeper into undesignated surplus funds, to reforecast potential benefits and turnover savings, and to make across the board cuts in school supplies, materials, and equipment. Even with these, dramatic, with these drastic actions, investments and restorations still needed to be further reduced again by an additional $132,000. 
So where are we now? Recognizing that Councilor Donovan had previously proposed reducing the school budget to achieve an overall tax impact of 2.9%, we would request that we instead moderate such a drastic cut to land between Councilor Donovan's proposal and the 3.5% narrowly defeated by the May 13th referendum. Specifically, the School Board Finance Committee, again with a reluctant consensus of the Board, is proposing a reduction in the overall tax impact to 3.25%. With nowhere else to turn, achieving this 3.25% number will require the superintendent and his team to further reduce requests for restorations by an additional $138,000. Recognizing that most did not particularly care for an itemized list of programic, uh, excuse me, program impacts that, as they were presented last year, we will not be doing the same thing this evening. We do know that this new reduction will likely result in further compromising our ability to implement our, our lang English language arts curriculum for grades K through five. It will further compromise our capacity to make best use of educational technology that the town has, obviously, has already invested in. And our guidance and college and career counseling at Scarborough High School will remain at counselor to student ratios far inferior to all surrounding districts and inadequate when considering nationally recommended ratios. Also, reliance on booster and parent funding of athletics and activities will continue to increase, placing more strain on the administration's requirements for oversight and regulation of such activities and potentially exposing the district to further liability issues. In the spirit of full disclosure, our overall capacity con to continue improvements and the momentum needed for continuous improvement will be diminished. If we are required to reduce this budget below our recommendation, our momentum and continuous improvement is the reason that Scarborough schools are being recognized both statewide and nationally as being the co in the company of the highest performing school districts. I would point to the recent U.S. News school rankings and the State of Maine school report cards just as a couple of examples. What we do not want is to eliminate any possible level of restoration in art, music, world language, or physical education. Nor do we want to have investments made by the community in technology that go unutilized or underutilized, or miss opportunities for our school readiness uh, jumpstart program, which pays back incredible dividends in early student learning results. We cannot jeopardize critically needed nursing, school safety, and athletic training services. These will be, these all be further impacted by the reductions below our valid and well-researched proposed bottom line of 3.25 percent, and would ask you to please accept our recommendation to you. Thank you for the opportunity to present, and we look forward to Direction. Okay, so um, I'm going to go ahead and at this time, this is where there is general public comment. So if you wish to speak on this item, please feel free to walk up to the podium, state your name, address, three minutes. So general, specific to this item. Yes, sorry, specific to this item, I said general. <laughs> I would hope that there would be some other people in town that might want to say something pro or con. My name is Robert Rovner. I'm at 4 King Street down in Pine Point. I um, don't quite get all the generalities and areas that my colleague from the school board just spoke about. He asked the question and disparage the community by saying that you know, so many people are coming out for the dogs and the birds and we had such a small turnout for education. I don't think it's a matter that people don't want education and I don't think it's a matter that people don't want to vote for education. I don't think people know what the hell they're voting for. You give them a, gave them a budget. We had 38 million last year. You give them a number. What are we voting for? What are we adding? How much is going to this area? How are the dollars being moved around? We don't know. How can we vote for something that we don't know where the money's going? The, the council asked the board to be flat, and yet they came in $4 million higher. I believe there's an issue on the table for another $6 million bond issue this year. It's going to put the town over $102 million in outstanding debt. It just seems to me, and again, it just seems to me that we as a community need to work with you 
Now understand what your needs are specifically. We'd like to sit down with you and go through your budget with you, and perhaps we can come up with some ideas creatively so that we can strike a balance, and the community then will have a complete understanding as to why you're asking for this money. When Mike stood up here before and he spoke about a 54% increase in guidance, I mean, you've got 3,100 kids in school, in the whole school system. You've got approximately 300 kids in a graduating class. My God, 50% in guidance. I'm all for language. I mentioned that to you the last time I spoke. But if you're running and people complain about kids being in study halls and not getting proper education, I know you want to keep a 15 to 1 ratio, if I understand correctly. But you know what? We're going through a tough time. So if you need to add two kids to a class or three kids to a class for a couple of years before you can get back to where you want to be, I don't see the harm in that. Not for a short time, but it would certainly help us taxpayers. And the mill rate is the thing. We're trying to keep the mill rate constant. I don't know if you live in town, but I do. And my taxes, I started out here seven years ago under $5,000. I'm now up over 77. With this new increase, I'm going to be over eight. It's over $4,000, approximately $4,000 in less than seven years. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Next. I spoke at the last town council meeting, and um, as a parent in the school district, was really disappointed that the budget didn't pass, primarily because I feel that... Can I inter uh, yeah. we do need oh, I'm sorry, name Cindy Kewick, and I live at Thank Morse Point Road in town. Um, so I guess what I just want to say to you tonight is that obviously it didn't pass where it was, but I do think it's really important uh, for not only the kids, but also the town, that we do maintain the level of services that our schools have provided. Uh, not only for our kids, I have kids and I want them to be successful, also for the town as our schools start to drop off the list of being successful, people aren't going to want to move to this town. I happen to work in real estate and we already have people saying that, oh yeah, I'd rather look at Cape Elizabeth, I'd rather look at Salamis, I'd rather look at Yarmouth. Their school districts are better. They invest in their school districts. Scarborough, what's that going on in the newspaper I read that they don't want to spend the money on their school districts? So there's a little bit of both. I understand that we need to keep costs down, but I also think that the extra $12 that would have cost the average taxpayer to have an improved school district is significantly less than the loss that their property values are going to be seeing if we continue to not invest in our town and in our schools. So I'd like you to consider that when you're thinking about the budget. Anybody else wish to speak on this item? My name is Michelle Arpin. I reside at 9 Coulthard Farms Road. And I'm late to the game this year. I did vote, but I haven't attended any of the budget um, proceedings to date because, frankly, I'm exhausted. <laughs> I've lived in this town for seven years, and it's amazing that we have to come out every year and battle and, and, and witness the cuts that are going on. So I was exhausted and I checked out this time. Voted, but I checked out because I, was, I couldn't put up the energy to come to the meetings and, um, and, and hear everything that was going on. I knew I would vote and so I did. Um, but I, what I will say is we elect um, school board officials and town council officials to do their job, which is look at the needs of the school and the town and make decisions. So I'm trusting that these people are making the best choices for our students and education staff. And um, as outsiders, we don't know what it takes um, in public education anymore. I work in a public school system, not in this district, and it wasn't until I started working there now in my fifth year where my eyes opened at how much goes on in public schools today. So much taking care of these kids that was completely different when I was in school. And I'm sure completely different from 
when a lot of us were in school. It does cost more to educate kids today. It's the hard fact, and I'm really sorry to say that, but kids are going to school with more medical needs. I'm a school nurse. I see it every day, every day. And my school doesn't have me even full time, and I have a diabetic student, about 40 students with asthma, 10 or so children with life-threatening food allergies. It co these kids weren't in public schools years ago. I couldn't name one child with a life-threatening food allergy. I couldn't name one child with, a di with diabetes that attended my school growing up. So students are coming to school with more um, medical needs? Absolutely. They're also coming to school with a lot more academic needs, and we are federally obligated to educate all these children. It costs more. It's a hard facts, and it's an eye-opening experience to spend one day in a public school. So let's trust the people that we've elected and the decisions they've made in our school budget. Attend school board meetings when the budget process is going into place. If you have questions, ask there. Just trust that the budget they put before us is in the best needs of our students. Thank you. Anybody else wish to speak? All right. So, seeing none, I'm going to close the public comments. And pleasure of the council. So moved. Is there a second? Okay, I will second. <laughs> and, um, be well, discussion, but I, I, I'm going to cut a, sh a little short there. We do have... Um, a motion in front of us that we need to take up um, that rectif goes hand in hand with the adjustment to the minutes that we made at the beginning of the meeting. So what this motion I'm going to offer is just to be reflective of the change that we made in the minutes so that it reads correctly now. Um, so the motion is to move approved to amend the main motion to replace order number 14-49 with the following. Order number 14-49 budget order for fiscal year 2015 school budget and be it ordered that the Scarborough Town Council moves approval for the first reading to adopt the fiscal year 2015 school budget and schedule a public hearing at 7 p.m. on Wednesday, June 4th, 14, as well as a second reading and be it ordered that the Scarborough Town Council hereby appropriates for school purposes the education operating budget the sum of 43000 $43,974,495, including adult education, school nutrition, and school debt. And the Town of Scarborough raises at the local share for the education operating budget the sum of $36,336,345. Be it further ordered that the portion of the education operating budget to be voted at referendum pursuant to MRSA 20 shall be the appropriated sum of 42,314,624 and the town of Scarborough raises as the local share the sum of 36,238,654 excluding adult education and school nutrition. Now, if I could just add a little clear, further clarity, I first of all apologize. I probably should have uh, proposed this in, the, in this uh, same fashion uh, for the agenda. But what this does, it, it simply reiterates what you did back on May 7th and, mm -hmm. and the budget that was actually failed at the polls. So it uh, captures those uh, corrected numbers, as you did in the minutes, but it also separates out, uh, there's a bit of a nuance here that it's a bit of a confusing thing, that the budget the council approves, and you have bottom line budget authority on the complete education budget, uh, is not the budget that goes to the voters. State statute, um, that budget, excludes adult education and school nutrition. So there are slight differences and it's a function of state law, frankly. So really to help better understand and break that out, I think I propose this motion for your consideration really to, to separate those two pieces. And I'm certainly pleased to answer any questions if you have any. I put that as a motion. Is there a second? Second. Okay. And any discussion or questions for Tom? For clarity. All right. Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion and opposed? Okay. And I didn't vote. 
I'm sorry. You went, went a little faster than I was prepared for. Oh, that's all right. Um, we can do a do-over. <laughs> all those in favor? And opposed? Okay. So now we are back to the main motion, now that it has the correct language that's filling in it. Um, so at this time, I will offer a second motion, which is to accept the School Finance Committee recommendations. So um, in the form of a motion, move approval to amend the main motion as amended to accept the School Finance Committee's recommend, recommended adjustment for further reduction of 138000 for a new total education operating budget of $43,836,495, including adult education and school nutrition, and a local share of $36,198,000. Is there a so second? Moved. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> second. Oh, second. All right. And discussion on motion two. Wow. Good, Jim. <coughs> I've got a I got a problem with going back to the beginning of the year. This being two years in a row. <coughs> part of our job is to come up with what we feel the town can afford. Last year it started off at fifteen million too high. This year it started at like nine thousand too high. I just went through the budget as so I wouldn't miss any conversation with extracurricular guidance services and health services. Tech benefits staff, tech benefits, books and prescription uh periodicals, benefits for sped teachers, athletic equipment, social worker salary, social worker salary, social worker salary, social worker salary. Between two years ago and now, those small amount of budget items have gone up three hundred and fifteen thousand dollars. I haven't gotten any reasonable answers and I've asked questions. How do books and prescriptions go up from forty four to a hundred and seven thousand uh, benefits for benefits for sped teachers? 111 to 160. Social worker salary, 95 to 130. The next one, social worker, is 9,000 to 290. Social worker, 9,000 to 337. Social worker salary, 251 to 411. Two. Too much money. At the beginning of the year, we came out with a flat fund. We did our job. As far as I'm concerned, it's now the school board's job to come in within those figures. What I just read off to you, except for the books, are teachers' salaries and benefits. And one of the one of the one of them in here. This sped benefits ninety five thousand and it's gonna go up to a hundred and fifty. Percentage wise, not good. And from the point of view of the town, we started off flat funded and now you're three and a half percent. Makes me feel like I'm not doing my job. Somehow, something got lost between the counselors and the people that make the school board. Percentages are too much. Um, I will say Mr. Rovner came up with good, good argument. These numbers don't mean a whole heck of a lot to us except 
That's what we got to pay. And uh, guidance total, 717000 going up in two years to a million three. That's darn close to double when I went to school. It's just not, it's just not working, and that's why I'm so obstinate. Thank you. Is there any other discussion on the motion? And I think just for... Oh, no. Go ahead, Bill. Uh, I want to explain why I'll support this motion. Uh, uh, this is a first reading. In a couple of weeks, we're going to reconvene, and we will have heard from the town. We will have had a chance to evaluate what the school board has done in making its further adjustments. Uh, and so we'll be in a much better position to make a sensible judgment on what is appropriate under the circumstances. My outlook has been from the beginning of this budget process that because the numbers were so high coming out of the school budget that we needed to look at what would a level services budget uh, increase look like, meaning the school still functions just as it has. Uh, it gives the raises uh, uh, and it uh, uh, makes payment on the obligations that it's required to. Uh, and that came to about 6% uh, cost increase. And what we have here proposed tonight is an increase of over 6% from last year's budget. So to people put it in context, there's a 6% increase in the cost of this school uh, from last year's budget is what's being proposed here. And we all got together months ago and concluded that because of the uh, difficult times that the community has gone through, all communities have gone through uh, with the recession, uh, with the lack of increases in pay and loss of jobs and people having to tighten their belts, that that was our recommendation. So I'm not at all comfortable with a 6% increase. But we're here at first reading, and we want to he uh, hear from the community. We want to study the hard work that the school department has put in. And we have a school board and an administration that is comprised of both thoughtful and smart people. I've always thought that they can find a way to continue to improve the school, even if the budget has some restraints imposed upon it, because they're that good. And the school is that good. The whole school system is that good. And I would not want to see anything done to diminish what we have now, which is why I've been in favor of a level services budget, uh, if that was necessary given the increases that we were going to experience. So I'm ready to listen to the town. Uh, I am uh, very concerned about the use of fund balances at the level that we're using them uh, so that the people in the town understand a fund balance is an unused uh, 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 portion of funds that were left over and not spent from prior budgets. And there was about a million dollars of that uh, out there. And they, uh, the school budget that's proposed proposes to, uh, to use about 600000 of that. And when you do, how are you going to pay next year and the year after if that's the basis on which you're funding your budget uh, with non-property tax revenues? It's impossible. You can do it once, but you can't do it twice. Uh, so, again, you're building in costs. You're making it very difficult uh, on the process going forward. So I have a problem with that. I wanted to say that, uh, and I wanted to explain why I am prepared to vote tonight to pass this to second reading based on the school board's proposal. 
Emory? Yeah, I, I also support uh, what the school board has come up with for cuts, and um, I, I feel that the school board's between the rock and the hard place in many ways. As I've mentioned many a time when I've been up here, uh, we are in a tough uh, situation as far as municipalities and school departments because of cost shifting from the state level uh, and non-funding of un uh, un excuse me of mandated services that are not funded um, by the state or the feds, um, and it's not right. And we are feeling the brunt of it now, and it takes about a year for things to trickle down and, and impact negatively. Um, as you know, I was disappointed with the first budget that came out of the school board, um, but I, again, I commend them on the work that they've done. Um, I, too, was disappointed that uh, the 3.5% uh, increase to the property tax did not pass. Uh, like Councillor Donovan, um, I'm supporting this 3.25. I want to I hear from constituents on their feelings about this, both pro and con, and uh, remind people to come out and vote uh, when, this, when this comes up. But we will be having a second hearing on this also. Uh, and I was quite frankly surprised there weren't more people speaking tonight. So that's all. Anybody want to talk? No? All right, my turn to chime in on my my motion, <laughs> the one that I offered. Um, so I, I'm going to just ref more or less ditto some of Jean Marie and, and and Bill's comments. You know, for a first reading, you know, um, I'll, I'll, I'll be happy to support it. I'll, obviously, that's why I offered it. Um, it is a first reading. I'm still looking to see what, what comes of it. Um, I'm sure we'll get lots of feedback through, through email and, and phone calls and people stopping by and everything else. Um, you know, and I, and I guess I am. And just to reiterate that, I am looking forward to that feedback because we, we weren't talking a large margin between pass or fail. The only thing that had anything significant to it was two to one is too high when um, the opinion portion on the bottom. Um, so the question and the million dollar question is, it's only failed by a little bit and how much is, you know, too low before you're too low. So um, trying to wrestle with what's the, what's the sweet spot to, to keep folks happy. So um, for a first reading, you know, I'm happy to pass it and again, looking for the feedback. Um, so that being said, on the amendment, all those in favor? $50,000. And all those opposed? On the amendment? Okay. So now we are back to the main motion, which is our first reading of the fiscal year 2015 budget. Is there any further discussion on this item? I'd just, I'd just like to say one and? thing. We had a lot of feedback last year when we passed the budget that increased our taxes by 6 or 7 percent. And that increased the taxes over the past four years by 21 percent. People told us cannot afford increases. We met as a town council in January and we set in place our objectives of having a flatline budget. At worst, except an increase of whatever the CPI was, and the CPI currently is about 1.5%. We're going through this every single year. This is not an anomaly this year. Every year we're going through the same thing. We have to begin to do something to bring our spending in control. We can't continue to have tax increases of 5, 6%, 7%. It's unattainable. We are going to drive people out of town. We have to put in place a plan over the next three to five years that basically says that we can increase our spending by a level of one and a half two, two and a half percent per year, fund all the things that we really need to fund and get on with life. We can't go through these battles every single year. 
It's not fair to the school. It's not fair to the taxpayers. That's why I'm going to vote against it. We have to start, and this is the year that we have to start. That's how I feel. Great. Any other discussion on the main motion? All right. All those in favor? And opposed? All right. Um, and just before I skip along to the next thing, um, I did have one, one comment. Um, the last order we discussed, it was also to schedule the public hearing and second reading for Wednesday, June 4th. That meeting will be um, a little bit of a different time. That will be starting at 6 instead of 7. So just to make everybody aware, we'll have a one hour earlier start time that meeting. Yeah, just to add some clarity, I know uh, that's the evening of the, uh, the uh, senior baccalaureate uh, ceremony at St. Max, and a number of the school leadership and school board members want to attend that function at 7.30. So as an accommodation, uh, the suggestion was to meet earlier that evening. Should we be changing this motion? The motion it's says 7 o'clock in it. What are you aware of that? It doesn't say anything. I'll make a note that changes this. Yeah. I think Tony will pick up that note mm -hmm. and make sure she uh, advertised the, the proper time. Yeah. Should have checked my notes a little sooner. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right, moving on. Order number 14-50 is out on the request to set the date, time, and location of the school budget validation referendum for Tuesday, June 10th, 2014. Yeah, that's it. And at the time, if there is any general public comment on setting the date and the time of the referendum question, please move forward to the podium. And seeing none, I'm going to close public comment and pleasure of the council. So moved. Second. And discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Just as a comment, and Tony, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe uh, we've been successful in getting uh, a machine, a voting machine dedicated for the school uh, validation vote. Mm -hmm. um, last time we had about 2,000 voters, and it took them close to two hours to work through that process. We would expect maybe a double that number, uh, given the primary election uh, and other ballot questions. So just in terms of efficiency of that evening, we're hopeful that we'll be able to use a voting machine Mm -hmm. That will only be able to record the yes and no's. We'll have to hand count the advisory point uh, question, uh, question two. But uh, that will at least get us that answer quickly that evening. All right. There are no non-action items, so we'll be moving to item nine, which is standing and special committee reports and liaison reports. And we'll start down on your end, Bill. Pardon me? A committee report? Uh, yes. Uh, uh, went to a, uh, a SEDCO uh, a meeting, uh, Ed and I attended. We also uh, uh, went to a Chamber of Commerce dinner uh, uh, this week uh, uh, that was uh, sponsored by the Scarborough Chamber of Commerce and uh, SEDCO. It was a great opportunity to meet a lot of the uh, uh, people who volunteer their time in the community, which for me was great to, to meet a lot of new faces. and get to understand how much of a public contribution there is. And I also want to thank Piper Shores for hosting the event. It did a wonderful job, and they have a terrific facility there. Can we? Yeah, um, Conservation Commission, uh, we meet the second Monday of the month, every month, um, and love to see people come to that on the last meeting. Uh, a lot of our discussion was about Benjamin Farm property, which is people probably know uh, the land trust has under contract right now and they are in the process of raising money. Um, and the, uh, I guess you call it the Parks and whatever. Parks and Conservation Land Board. Yes. Um, they have recommended that <laughs> the town um, come up with $2 million <coughs> from the land bond, then just so you'll know before you freak out on it, that that was something that was previously approved by voters, and it's just a matter of um, us um, as a town council supporting it when it comes before us, and I believe it may, it's supposed to come before us June 4th, 
but we did discuss that as Conservation Commission as this is a, a prime piece of property that long term looking ahead for the town of Scarborough makes a lot of sense. So we did discuss that. We also had a long range planning uh, meeting and regretfully I had to miss it. First meeting I've missed, so can't report. <laughs> Uh, Jim? I have nothing. Ed? Uh, yeah, I, I attended the Senior Program Advisory Board meeting yesterday morning, and the bulk of the discussion in the board was the fact that they're down two voting members and an alternate. And I'm just trying to make a plea right now for anybody that's interested. Uh, and join the Seniors Program Advisory Board. Let me briefly describe what they do. The Seniors Program Advisory Board provides directional advice for development of seniors programs and services to the Seniors Program Coordinator. The board, uh, the board meets to discuss the planning, development, and implementation of senior programs, taking into consideration the monthly volunteer committee reports presented to the board by the Seniors Program Coordinator. They review the budget at all meetings, and they conduct reviews of activities. Um, anybody that's interested and would like a little bit more information, um, you can apply um, by contacting Cody uh, and getting a, uh, an application. Or uh, if you'd like more information, I would recommend that you give Bud Hansen, who is the uh, the chairman of the, the board, a call, and his number is 883-7857, and Bud would be more than happy to discuss what the board does. And I'm just making a plea for people to show up so we can, some days we can't even vote and stuff. Mm. So, that's it. Okay. And, all right, so item number 10, town manager report. Thank you. Just a couple pieces of information. Uh, the town has been working for a better part of the year with uh, our colleagues at PACS, that's the Portland Area Comp Comprehensive Transportation Group, uh, and DOT, and the City of South Portland regarding uh, connection of the Eastern Trail from Wainwright Field out to Pleasant Hill Road. And I'm pleased to report that we've been successful in securing funding through PACS and, and MDOT to complete final design, permitting, and construction from that. Uh, that segment from Wain Wainwright Field where the trail ends out to Pleasant Hill Road. Uh, the, the final segment is certainly the most expensive uh, that will re require getting over the railroad tracks, very active track with Amtrak activity and freight trains uh, and Nunsuch River. Uh, interestingly though, that's designed and that's probably the easiest part but for the funding. Uh, but we're very pleased to advance that piece and uh, we'll be looking for construction sometime probably fall over the winter. Um, also, just to report, um, the pedestrian improvement project that's down here at Route 114, Wentworth Drive, Hannaford Drive, uh, will be going out to bid uh, at the end of this week with bids due back by the second week of June. Uh, the council may recall this project wa is being funded through the school uh, improvement project. Mm -hmm. and it was really, uh, I won't say an exchange or a trade-off uh, of our efforts to assist in the wetland mitigation component. Uh, undoubtedly, it will have benefits to the school and the campus uh, and also the town, so we really look forward to this improvement. And it was also envisioned uh, as part of the Oak Hill Pedestrian Improvement Plan as well. Uh, just a plea to the council members, uh, the, the town is a member of the Maine Municipal Association. One of the major functions they do is they have a legislative policy committee made up of about 70 members statewide, and Scarborough actually has the opportunity for two representatives to represent our interests. And this group works with the MMA staff and their lobbyists to shape uh, legislative issues and to get engaged in that process. So if anyone's interested in the council and being involved in that effort, please, please tell me. And secondly, if you have any ideas uh, about things that we should be bringing to the State House, this is the group to really push that stuff forward with. Uh, and two other final points of interest, uh, the Black Paint Road sidewalk project. There's some final landscaping improvements that will occur next week. Home seed and plantings will occur. 
And lastly, we're looking to coordinate a meeting with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. They've asked to meet back with the town now that you've taken final action with the ordinance changes. And I'm really anxious to, frankly, tell our story and to show not just in our words but in our deeds to date and, and what we endeavored to do over the summer. And I think we have a very uh, compelling conversation to have with them. Um, so we expect that to happen sometime next week, and I'll keep the council advised. All right, and item number 10 will be council member comment, and we'll go ahead and start down on the other end with Kate. Good, thank you. Okay. Ed? I'm all done. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and Jim? I did all that. Okay. Um, Jean Marie? Oh, you know me, I always have something to say. Um, <laughs> um, I want to thank Kristen Yon for coming and uh, spending time with me and working on his scout badge. It's always very interesting to, to speak to uh, young folks. I, I miss teaching a lot <laughs> some days, so uh, um, I enjoy uh, meeting and finding out what they're up to and, and their thoughts and ideas. Also, I, uh, I forgot to schedule an open office hour during the month of May, so I will be available, write this down, June 11th, from 5.30 to 6.30. I'm going to be here at Town Hall in the manager's conference room to meet with anyone from the public who'd like to stop in and complain or <laughs> tell us we're doing a good job or whatever. I, I'm, I, after I scheduled, I thought, oh boy, that's the day after the election, but that's okay. I can handle it. So please be sure and stop by. 5.30 to 6.30 uh, here at Town Hall Manager's Conference Room. I will be available for anyone who would like to wander in and chat. Right. Bill? Uh, the other uh, thing that we got together, again, Ed and Jean Marie uh, were there with me both at the Chamber of Commerce, which I appreciated seeing friendly faces <laughs> who I knew. But also we went to uh, a, a vision committee uh, meeting uh, that was a meeting of all town committees. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know there was a vision committee. And this is, I think, outside the town structure itself. But again, it, it focuses on how to get all of the town committees working together more effectively. Uh, and I was excited to hear that because there were a lot of very thoughtful people in the audience uh, and people who were giving of their time uh, for the public good. Uh, and one of the things that I think we want to encourage people in the community who have skills and are interested in making a contribution and being active and being involved, uh, be in touch with you know, our very able town manager and town clerk who are aware of where those openings are and who are accessible and pick up the phone. So, I mean, this is... It, we are unique, I think, in, in the easy access to the highest levels of the administration of our town. Uh, and and it, it's, a, it's a nice thing to make that contribution. It's very rewarding, and there's a lot of people in our community who have a lot of skills who, uh, who, would, uh, who would make a wonderful contribution. Uh, the other piece of news that I think is great, we had a long, arduous debate over uh, plover and plover protection. Uh, and there are plovers uh, nesting on both Pine Point and Higgins Beach, uh, which is great. Uh, it's terrific. We're, uh, uh, we're uh, excited about the prospect of that. I didn't know uh, a plover from uh, anything else a year ago, so this is uh, a year or two ago. So this is uh, interesting for me. I, I've become much more interested in kind of what's going on out there and who needs protection. Uh, and, uh, and it's uh, great to see that, uh, that the birds uh, seem to be successful on our Scarborough beaches. Thank you. All right, and um, I do want to just take a moment. We, we do do this um, once a month. This will be um, this period where we do offer our condolences to members of the community that have since moved on. So um, there are some names this, this week. Um, Mary Teresa Beck, Roderick Blanchett, Dale Bliss, Dorothy Crandall, Susan Strzok, and 
Hiram, Luella Lasky, Sarah Love, and then we have um, a few folks that are um, Theodore Park Atwood. Um, he was a lifetime resident, uh, was raised in the Pine Point area, um, was a Scarborough grad, is a vet. Um, and we also had um, Vera Tam, who I don't know who the Thames and Alquists and all those folks are, um, was again a lifetime resident, lived up in North Scarborough. Um, so again, we'd like to extend our condolences, condolences to those families. Um, and on to maybe a bit of a happier note, um, we do have the three-day weekend ahead of us. It's, it's Memorial Day. There will be a parade on Monday. I think it starts at 10, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, you go when I think yeah. so. <laughs> um, and then last but not least, I thought I would just say, so on the record, all the students that were here at the beginning of the meeting and stated their name have all stayed. They were here for the whole thing, so they, they were good. So um, with nothing else, at this time, we'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So, oh, oh, second. All those in favor? Aye.